Hello and welcome back to This Complex Life. Today I have a listener question. Hi Marie, I am a 62 year old dad of two teenage girls and I think I'm quite progressive and have had life experience that could be shared if they would only seem a little bit interested in who I am as a person and the life I have experienced. What are they really thinking about me and what strategies can I use to cope when I feel dismissed? Oh dear parent... That's a really tough one and I can sense maybe some despair and some nervousness about what's happening to the relationship. Is there a rupture? Is there a lost connection? There could be a lot happening right now. So I want to go through a few things that I think could be really helpful to keep in mind. And again, this is general in nature, but it might give you some things to think about. I'm really glad that you wrote in because starting to understand what you can do differently is probably the most helpful thing because we can't change other people's behavior we can only control ourselves so that's a really good first step two teenage girls okay so at this time around adolescence we see a lot of changes it is very normal and expected for teenagers to start to gravitate towards their peers more to explore establishing their own identities and to start to separate from their families and this might be subtle with small changes in music taste in fashion in hairstyles or it could be with bigger things like exploring their own Uh, religious interest or moving away from religion or different political interests so that can cause some rupture in families especially if there are some values that you hold dear and you know quite important in your family seeing your children start to challenge those or ignore them altogether can be really hard but this is part of developing themselves their job as adolescents is to figure out the person they're going to be who they are what they're interested in and how they're going to move through the world so these are all parts that come along with that that individuation process and that maturation and that can be really painful for parents so it's worth knowing that it doesn't mean you've necessarily done something wrong or that they are trying to be offensive if they've gone against a belief that you've had as a family they're trying to figure out who they are and what's important to them part of becoming an adult is also figuring out your individual expression and how you relate to other people and that can be quite a kind of egocentric process it means we can really focus on ourselves and become the the main character of our story and so it's important to recognize that that's something that they're going through that they are the main character and that might not be uh, easy to to sit with uh, but you might not be important in that story right now or how they view in the world is really based on themselves that does change as we get older but it's quite um, quite common I guess in adolescence to see that they're very self-focused one of the pitfalls I see when parents are trying to navigate this adolescent stage is taking some of those changes personally you know if your child no longer um, wants to read books that you once read together or maybe you used to like to go to the football and all of a sudden they don't like sport or perhaps you all went to church as a family and they are no longer interested it can feel really wounding it can feel really dismissive I can even make you think uh, you're being judged all of a sudden they've changed they're no longer that young cute sweet kid how you handle that can really form the foundation for your relationship moving forward so being very careful not to criticize their changes not to say things like but you always used to come with us that's really kind of judgy and critical and it's not inviting connection Uh, saying things like you never have time for us anymore again isn't really helpful so we want to make sure that you're handling those conversations in a helpful way and I'll talk a little bit about that in a moment it can be really helpful during this time to show interest in their hobbies and interests oh tell me more about that or what's happening or what made you question those things 
curiously, not critically, uh, and maybe not too intensely because they are more susceptible to feeling criticized. We see across that age bracket, you know, that adolescent period, that there is an increased I guess sensitivity to being um, to feeling criticised, often from parents, but sometimes teachers and other authority figures. So being really careful not to criticise or judge, and to be really genuine and curious. One of my favourite analogies to share with parents in my workshops is this idea of moving from manager to consultant, and I think it can be really helpful in this uh, for this question. When they're young, they need you really involved in their life. Again, they're probably not super interested in your all the things that you do, but they're very um, focused on you. They might want you to drop them off at the school gate. Maybe they don't even want to go to school because they just want to like hug you and be around you, and they want to watch movies with you and read books with you and play with you, and maybe almost to the point where they're they're annoying and nagging, like let's play, let's do this, let's read. What are you doing? What are you watching? And somewhere around end of primary school start of high school they fire you from that role as manager and it's imagine going to work one day and you know you go into your office maybe you catch the lift up to the floor that you're working on your boss sits you down and says thank you for coming uh your job has been made redundant and now some people can handle that with some maybe very unhelpful responses they might say stuff this i don't need this job anyway good riddance to you all and storm out and some might be like (laughs) no not today this is unfair dismissal and they spend years in litigation fighting that unfair dismissal claim neither of those approaches is super helpful what we want is to get hired back as a consultant and so for parents this can happen gradually over time maybe they spend less and less time with you um what used to be a fun kind of family weekend might be now, oh, no, I kind of want to stay back home and, and watch this thing on Netflix or hang out with friends. Or it might happen really quite abruptly. All of a sudden, they're just like, nope, not interested. And that can be really painful for parents. So it's important to recognize your response to that and how to get hired back as the consultant. Now, this is crucial for the relationship that you have with them, but also for their ongoing development so they can learn. That consultant role is more of a mentor, a teacher, a support rather than a dictator or manager or micromanaging. So we really want to step back, you know, it's side by side and maybe even a little bit back. It's letting them take the lead. Uh, Family rules are more collaborative. Consequences are discussed. Things are more conversational and they're starting to develop their own ways of handling conflict, of navigating life, of negotiating things based on how they observe you. So this is really key. It's really, really hard for them to be what they can't see. So if you're wanting your child to have empathy, you have to show them empathy. Empathy is not saying to them, how do you think it made your brother feel when you did that? Empathy is saying, oh, it looks like you had a tough day. You seem really disappointed that you didn't get the results you wanted. You got held back from class. That must feel really unfair when you're actually such a good student. It's empathizing with their feeling. Now, empathy does not mean you agree with the situation. It doesn't mean that you endorse it or approve of it. It's that you can understand based on their observation, their interpretation or their experience that you can see what that would feel like. So that's really, really important as part of that consultant role. It's actually really important across the whole developmental, the whole lifespan really from babies to your partners to everything. But in that teenage bracket, it's going to test that a little bit more because they will be pushing back. They might be taking some more risks. They might be testing boundaries. And so how you have those conversations from a place of empathy is really, really important. So think about what kind of values you want, what kind of role model you want to be, uh, and what kind of behaviors you want them to learn. Because if they're not receiving that, they can't give it. They, They can't be honest if they're not seeing honesty from you they can't take accountability and responsibility if they haven't seen that if they don't have the language for it if they haven't seen or heard someone say to them hey 
how I handled that situation was not very great. I actually really want to say I'm sorry. I'm still disappointed in this behavior. You know, insert the behavior here. But how I handled that was not okay. That's teaching them accountability is actually by being accountable yourself. So this kind of neatly goes into my second point or the second topic I wanted to discuss was effective communication without emotional pressure. Bear with me. Let me explain this. Terry Real, a renowned couples, families, relationship expert, he has some really great things and is the founder of Relational Life Therapy and some really great content coming out from his stuff and some really good books and things on his website. He talks about this idea about angry pursuit is a dysfunctional relational stance. Okay, so he calls angry pursuit an oxymoron. Angry pursuit will never get you more of what you want. You will never motivate someone to get closer to you by complaining about how distant they are. It's just not going to work. And this is he just phrases it so beautifully and this is really when you're using guilt or maybe for lack of a better word things like emotional blackmail to try and get your needs met it could be saying things like you never show an interest in me okay that's using anger or guilt it's saying things like you're always on your phone okay those things are actually trying to bring someone closer to you but you're using anger or you're using shame or criticism and that's not going to work same applies for most relationships all right but thinking about this with a teenager anger coming at it from that anger pursuit is not going to get you connection it just won't so instead it's important to try and have more open-ended questions or actually saying what you want more of i really want to spend some time with you i feel quite disconnected when you're on your device could we do something together i want to i want to share with you some parts of my life before you came along before i met your mother father partner whatever okay so i want to give you another example about this angry pursuit so remember that this this behavior it's it's counterproductive it's it's often motivated or typically motivated by a desire for closeness or maybe recognition but it pushes the other person away and it can create more distance than closeness so it's really important to remember that and to notice when you do this because we all do it okay guaranteed so trying to find where your where this shows up for you and how you might want to do it differently so I want to give you an example of a bit more detail of how this might look. So imagine that you feel disconnected from your from your children. Uh, maybe they've recently, or, or child, I'll just say, father and daughter. Imagine you're a father who feels disconnected from his daughter. Uh, she's recently started high school and is spending more time with her friends, um, going to their houses. Maybe there's after school or extracurricular activities. And that leads her to spend less time at home a father might feel uh, sidelined and might confront her after she misses several family dinners by saying something like you just don't care about this family anymore you're always out with your friends it's like we don't even exist to you okay the desire there is for connection or closeness or to repair a feeling of disconnection but that response will not get you closer so you can see that by expressing that loneliness or that disconnection desire for more time together it eventually creates an environment of shame and defensiveness for your daughter so instead of understanding her father's need for connection she might feel unfairly criticized and withdraw even further avoiding family time to escape the conflict and negative emotions at home so the attempt to connect actually pushes them away and then that cycle continues. Might be a follow-up a few weeks later. So nice of you to finally grace us with your presence. And she might think, well, why would I bother when every time I spend time with you, I'm feeling criticized? And I hear it. Parents will say, well, if you just spend time with us, we wouldn't have to. But that's not going to work. It just won't. It won't work. So this reaction will keep deepening that divide between you. So what to do instead? This this is tricky and it might be that in the situation, in the moment, this is harder to do. So first is to breathe 
and keep an eye on your own reactivity. And then coming at it with I statements, not I feel upset when you, no, 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 none of that. I would like to spend time with you. I feel really disconnected from you now that you've started school. I see that you've got a, a boyfriend, a job, a girlfriends, friends, and there's so much going on for you, and I'm feeling a little left out. It'd be great if we could find something to do together. And remember, as the consultant, these are conversations that are collaborative. I'd like to spend some more time together. What would be something we could do? Or if it's a teenager who's just really not interested in stuff, maybe saying, what's the least boring activity that you can come up with? Okay, so you have a chat about that. Maybe it's something really uh, fixed in your calendar and really regular. Perhaps you have a, a date night where you say, okay, once a month on a Friday night or Saturday, you can pick the activity. This is the f- budget and we can do something that you like. This would give you a chance to connect, to understand their interests, but also If you're teaching them about money or budgeting or planning and organizing, they can learn some of those things as well. And that's really good even for for younger kids, but starting to teach them through experience. Okay, we have, let's say, $50 once a month. You get to choose what you want to do. And if they say we want to go to the movies, okay, great. How do you find out when the movies are? What movie do you want to see? Can you book the ticket? Does that factor in popcorn or do we need to bring our own snacks or do we go to the drive-in so we can bring our own food? So this actually can become a conversation piece and it's a really good chance to start to teach them different tools and skills, but also show them that you value them, their interests, and that your job as a parent, it's for them. It's not the other way around. They aren't there to meet your needs. They're not there to make you happy or make you feel a certain way. It's really hard to kind of sometimes sit with, but it's the reality. They're not there for you. And so doing things for them that they're interested in, showing an interest in them. Remember, they also can't be what they can't see. So you showing an interest in their hobbies, their interests, asking them insightful questions, not being judgmental, gives them the toolkit, the language to one day ask those questions back. It might not be to you, maybe as adults, but it might be to their future kids or to their friends or to their younger siblings. So they get to learn that language by experiencing it from you. Using I statements and express how you feel. It could be sometimes I feel a bit left out when we don't get a time, we don't get time to chat. Maybe we could spend some time each week to just catch up. Very different to saying you never spend time with me anymore. Okay, remember the request is very different when it comes from that authentic, more vulnerable place but not so much that you're placing burden on them so you don't want to say I feel so left out now that you're a teenager and I don't know what to do with myself and I was a stay-at-home parent for years and they don't need that much background if that's how you feel that's totally valid you can go speak to a co-parent a friend a sibling a psychologist therapist family therapist about that they just need to know a little bit I feel left out when we don't get to spend time together. I don't know much about your world. I'd like to find a way to do that different. And if you're listening to this and you're thinking, oh my God, I've, I've got this wrong. That's okay. Maybe tell them, hey, I saw this thing today or I heard this thing that made me think there's some room to do things different in our relationship. Can I talk to you about it sometime? Or can I talk to you later about a couple of things that have been on my mind? Are you sharing that with them authentically? Gives them language and tools to be able to do it back. So you saying, hey, there's some room for improvement here. And if they say, well, how did you learn that? You can say, I was listening to a podcast. I was watching a video. I looked at a blog post. I read a book. You know, whatever, wherever you got that idea from, share that. Say, I did that because I'm feeling that there's a disconnection in our relationship and I didn't want to get it wrong or I wanted to do it different or better. You're showing that they're important, that you're open to learning new things. You're role modeling some really good positive help-seeking behavior. So you're normalizing the use of these kinds of platforms for emotional growth or emotional development. And I think that's a really good thing. And the last bit I want to share is trying not to fix it. I remember in, in, you know, in your 
question you ask, I have all this life experience, if only they would just listen. And I say that a lot from parents when I was sharing some ideas about this podcast episode with a friend of mine. She was like, yeah, absolutely. And if she would just listen to me, she would not have a bad day in her life. And that's kind of funny. And I think she understood the irony in that because we can't control people like that. And especially when they are teenagers and they're individuating, they're developing their autonomy, they need to make mistakes and they need to learn things on their own. But more importantly, if we're focusing on the relationship and on connection, we feel connected when we're validated, heard, empathized with and understood so if your teen is saying things to you and you're getting comments like oh, you just don't listen to me or you don't understand or what do you know you're old take a breath notice that you might be feeling stuff right angry rejected confused pop that aside for a moment they're telling you something there they're telling you i don't feel heard i don't feel understood but they don't have the language for it yet so listen twice three times four times as much as you talk when you give advice unsolicited or poorly timed they might hear you're not smart enough to work this out i don't trust you you're incompetent they might feel criticized they're they're extra sensitive to to feelings of criticism at this age you know i think and i have one um that comes up a lot where someone might be trying to learn a new technology or device and someone just comes across their shoulder and is like oh let me just do that for you that's not helpful they feel like well don't you think I can do it I could have figured it out on my own you know all of those sorts of things it's really not helpful so while your intention is great trying to fix it and offering solutions it's it's often not well received by anybody really but teenagers in particular are sensitive to feeling criticized as a result but most of us are I know if I say you know I applied for a job and I didn't get it or I'm really struggling with recruitment at the moment and someone makes a comment like have you thought of looking up seek I'm gonna think yeah of course I have I mean that's so obvious do you think I didn't think of that and then I get really anxious or overwhelmed thinking they're not listening, they're not understanding, they're not asking questions or holding space for me and I shut down and over time I'd be less likely to share things with that person. So try not to fix it and if you're really struggling, think of the role of the consultant. Your job's not to fix the problem, your job is to maintain the relationship and teach them what they need to know and sometimes that's through experience but that connection comes from being heard and understood and sometimes asking them hmm what do you think we could do here or what have you already tried and then if appropriate right at the end then say look I've got some ideas of what might be helpful could I share them with you but don't lead with that because that will just shut off the conversation I hope you found that helpful. I go into a lot of those issues and much more in my Connected Teens program. In this course, I have brought together some of my, uh, I've brought together years of my work with families. It's the course that I wish every parent did before they sent their kids to therapy or when they had teenagers. Talk about understanding your values, how you were parented and how that impacts your parenting and some of these common issues that parents face so check it out thank you for listening to keep the conversation going head on over to instagram or linkedin and follow me if you'd like to keep updated with episodes and other interesting things happening in mental health join my weekly this complex life newsletter where i'll share tools tips and insights there's a link in the show notes got a question you want answered shoot me an email or a dm i'd love to hear from you and if you enjoy the show i'd really appreciate it if you could leave a rating and a review It helps other people find the podcast.